Google has been making high-end Chromebooks for almost a decade now, dating back to the $1,300 Chromebook Pixel in 2013. At the time, many people saw it as a beautiful but strange device. But in the years that followed, both Google and its hardware partners have made premium Chromebooks more and more commonplace. But a still unconformed report earlier this year suggests that Google's giving up on making laptop hardware, at least for now. The company hasn't said anything of the sort officially yet, but the reality is that Google hasn't made a new Chromebook since the Pixelbook Go in late 2019. Of course, that hasn't stopped other manufacturers from making Chromebooks with gorgeous screens, great industrial design, and powerful hardware. But HP's Elite Dragonfly Chromebook, released earlier this year, might be the nicest I've used in a long time. It also has a jaw-dropping price, starting at well over $1,000. Much like the original Chromebook Pixel, HP's latest is a joy to use that is also very hard to recommend because of that price. Before we talk about the bummer that is the HP Elite Dragonfly Chromebook's cost, let's go over the good stuff. The Dragonfly is similar in stature to a MacBook Air, weighing in at about 2.8 pounds and measuring only 0.65 inches thick. Combined with a fairly spacious 13.5 inch touchscreen display with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, the Dragonfly is comfortable to work on and is easy to travel with. Design-wise, it's a Spartan affair with a dark gray finish and only a few silver accents to be found. But given that HP is primarily targeting this computer at enterprise users, it makes sense that they went with a classic look here. HP did a good job of offering a decent selection of ports despite the Dragonfly's rather slim profile. It has two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, a USB-A connection, a headphone jack, HDMI, and a micro SD slot. That's a lot better than you'll get on your typical ultra portable. There's a handful of things that make the Dragonfly really stand out. For starters, it has an excellent display with a three by two aspect ratio that provides more vertical viewing space than your average standard 16 by nine screen. The configuration I'm testing has a 2256 by 1504 resolution, good for about 200 pixels per inch. Sure, there are more pixel dense displays out there, but this one looks stunning with sharp text and images and basically no visible pixels. It's the nicest screen on a Chromebook I've seen in a long time. The only minor knock is its unremarkable 60 hertz refresh rate, but that shouldn't be a major issue for most people. Still, HP spared basically no expense on nearly everything else, so it would have been nice to have. The keyboard and trackpad are also unsurprisingly excellent. The keys are firm, but not too firm, and have plenty of travel for a relatively thin laptop. The trackpad, meanwhile, is large and responsive. Nothing quite matches up to the trackpad on a MacBook for me, but this one feels pretty close. HP says it's a haptic touchpad with customized vibrations for some specific actions, like pinning windows in split screen or switching between virtual desks. But I can't say I noticed much of anything there. Still, the touchpad provides a very good experience overall. Finally, the Dragonfly has cutting edge specs with a 12th generation Intel Core i5 processor, built-in LTE, 256 gigs of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. That's plenty for basically anything you wanna do in Chrome OS, and I never experienced any stutters when switching apps or playing back music and video. Despite the high resolution screen and powerful processor, battery life is also solid, if not spectacular. I got between six and eight hours of normal usage, which involved a lot of Chrome tabs, Spotify, Todoist, Slack, Google Keep, Trello, and the occasional Android app here and there. And if battery is your foremost concern, the model with a Core i3 processor or a lower resolution screen will likely last even longer. The problem that keeps me from recommending the Dragonfly is easy to explain. The cheapest model of this laptop costs an eye-popping $1,150 with an i3 processor and only 128 gigabytes of storage. As usual, HP has a dizzying array of different configurations, but I don't think they're actually selling the model I'm testing through their site right now. But there is an option with an i5 processor that costs more than $1,500, that is crazy money for a Chromebook, no matter how nice it is. For a comparison, Acer's Chromebook Spin 714 has essentially the same processor, storage, and RAM as the Dragonfly for only $730. The screen and build quality aren't quite as nice, but we're talking about a computer that's essentially just as capable and costs half as much as what HP is offering. For the cost of the Dragonfly, you could also pick up an extremely capable Windows laptop or MacBook Air. As much as I might like using Chrome OS, it's nearly impossible to recommend anyone spend that kind of cash on a Chromebook. To be fair to HP, the company isn't positioning this as a broad consumer device. It falls under their enterprise category, and I could imagine some businesses that are heavily invested in Google's ecosystem buying these laptops for executives or discerning users who demand a high-performance laptop. 
But there's no denying that at this price point, Chrome OS is a compromise compared to Windows or Mac OS. In this way, HP's Elite Dragonfly Chromebook is a lot like Google's original Chromebook Pixel. It's the best Chromebook you can buy, and it shows how good the experience of using Chrome OS can be. But it's not so much better than the many other reasonably priced options out there for anyone to seriously consider, unless they just love Chrome OS and have money to burn.